in this lesson we'll go over the compounding factor and we'll bring in together the nominal rate the term rate uh, terms per year total terms and it will bring about this compounding factor so what is this compounding factor well the compounding factor okay, i'm going to uncover here is simply nothing else but the growth or the compounded growth of one dollar over time and what you have or what you can imagine is you are starting off with a dollar and you're interested to what's going to be happening to this dollar okay as you keep going okay and these terms that we have grow on a continuous basis so here is our dollar here is the growth at least in the first term but we're interested in what happens not just in one term but in n terms to that particular dollar so that's the formula that we can use and it is known as the compounding factor let's take a look at some examples and how to apply this so before we hit the examples uh, recall from the previous lessons that we had this chart how we were compounding you know from annually and we can go all the way down and compound very quickly in terms of daily and then right here what we had okay is we simply had our m which was the number of terms that we would have depending on how you compound in each year so if you were given for instance something like this let's take our first example here so this one okay i'm gonna bring it down we have 8.5 percent and we were compounding quarterly for seven years so how would we find the compounding factor i always like to always write down well first what is m well, it's quarterly, so M is going to be four. Then I always like to write down what is N, which is the total number of terms. And that is, you will recall from the previous lessons, it is the number of years, which is seven multiplied by M. So in this case, it's 28. The next thing is, what is J? What's your nominal rate? Okay, so in this case, it's 8.5%. So I'll keep it as a decimal. And then I need my I, and remember, I is the term rate, the compounding term rate, and that would be the nominal rate that you have divided by your M. Now, once you have this, if I scroll back, okay, then we can use our compounding factor formula to actually see what happens to a dollar over time. So in this case, I have one plus, and it's I, well, I have my I right here, 0 0.085 divided by 4. And then I have to raise it to N. Okay, so N is right there, which is 28. And that is your compounding factor. Now, we can find out what the answer to this is. Okay, you can take out your calculator and plug it all in, okay, if you like. So let me do that. I have 1 plus 0 0.085 divided by 4 and then we have to hit to the exponent of 28 and that gives us 1.80176 and so on now although this is the growth of one dollar because it's still a factor we do like to keep all our decimal places and you will see that in the future Okay, examples. The reason is because we're not always investing just one dollar. What if we invested a million dollars? Then all of these decimal places actually would be important. So don't round them. Just keep them, okay, or at least keep as many as you possibly can off of your calculator. All right. So that was our first example. Okay, let's take a look at our second example, which is a little bit harder and it's going to be a little awkward to put into our calculator. Okay, so here's our second example. Okay, so we're going to start off. So here's our nominal rate. We're compounding monthly. Okay, and we want to do it for 82 weeks in total. So just like the previous example, 
just be consistent. You know, always ask yourself, okay, what is M? It's monthly, so it's 12. The next item is what is N, which is the number of terms. And in the number of terms, we need first the number of years. So it's 82 weeks. Well, there are 52 weeks in a year. And then you multiply by 12. So I like to keep this as... Um, as a, a fraction in this case, unless it works out to be something nice. Okay, so let's take a <clears throat> look what this will be. So 82 times 12, okay, so that's 984. That's your 984, that's your numerator divided by 52. And you can, of course, reduce this. Your calculator, especially if you have a scientific calculator, you can certainly reduce this. So you can use your fraction button, and I will use one here, over 52. And once you use your fraction button, you know, you can reduce this. Now, does it matter? Does it have to be reduced? No, not necessarily, because we're not doing reduction of fractions here. We just want to know N. So either this or this will work. And I like to keep it as a fraction just so that I don't have to worry about keeping decimals, okay? Now, next is J. So for J, we have 0 0.0125. Okay, so notice that's right there. And then our I is simply our J, which is the nominal rate, divided by M. And in this case, that was 12. And notice I'm not going to... Um, actually find out what the answer is. Again, the problem always is if you start finding out, okay, so if it's either this right here or this right here, and you start dividing it, you might just run into having to keep a lot of decimals. So it's easier to do this because, you know, if we did want to find out what the compounding factor is, I will just simply let the calculator do all the work for me. So it's one plus I, to the power of, okay, in this case, yes, it's a power of fraction. So how do you input this in? Okay, so let me just show you. So it would be no different. So one plus 0 0.0125 divided by 12, close your bracket. And then you hit your exponent button and that will be to the exponent. And I will put a bracket because it's a fraction so it is 246 divided by, in this case, 13, and close the bracket. So in your exponent, you can just use the, the bracket so that the calculator does the work for you. And then we're just going to hit equals. All right, so our answer would be 1.01989 again. And you can keep all of them. Um, don't start rounding these compounding factors. Okay. All right, now the, the last example that we have here, so let me just copy this one and I'll bring it down so that we can go through this. So it's pretty systematic, right? What's your nominal rate? How are you compounding and for how long? And from that information, you wanna find first M, and well, at least I do. So semi-annually is twice per year. Then I want to find N. Okay, so this is the length of time. So it's always years. Well, this is days. So I have to divide this by 365. This will give me how many years? Multiplied by 2. Okay. And now the same thing. Okay, so in, in this particular example, so if you take 750 times 2, that's actually 1,500 over... 365 and you can reduce this if you like or you can just uh, keep it that way I'm going to keep it that way in, in this particular example so I won't reduce I'll just keep n as it is now next so j okay so that's right here 0 0.071 that's your nominal rate and then your i is equal to 0 0.071 divided by and don't forget your m which is two. So now inputting this in, so I have one plus 0 0.071 over two. That's your I for how long? That's this odd 
exponent right there. Let's punch it in. So again, 1 plus 0 0.071 divided by 2. Close your bracket. Hit your exponent button. 1, 5. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll put the brackets because it's a fraction. 1, 5, 0, 0 divided by 365 and then close the bracket for the exponent and then hit equals and then there you have it so it'll be 1.1541 and so on you can write them all down again don't round it okay keep it because it's a factor okay with respect to a dollar again in in business and in investing or borrowing you know nowadays it's very easy to run into millions and billions and so on so these uh Decimals for the compounding factor matter. And by the way, for those who are interested, you know, in terms of your exponent buttons okay, that you guys have, mine, as you see it right there on the top, okay, is this one. But yours exponent, but depending which calculator you have, it might look something like this, a little hat. That's an exponent button. Sometimes it looks like this. Uh, so you're going to have to try to find out what your exponent button is. Okay. Now, in the future, okay, you know, once we start finishing all of these lessons, uh, you know, we're not, we won't have to use a scientific calculator. You can use a business calculator to input all of these in, and uh, that video is actually posted as well. You can take a look at it on my site. All right. Hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.